What's going on, with people? You already know what it is. It's your boy Tunji, YB TV. Today, I got a question from Rod Chi Miller. Uh, before we dive into that, I definitely want to dive into the commercial break. Go to www.ybetv.org. Go down to Ask Tune and Ask Tune questions. Whatever you want to ask, you ask Tune and I get back to you. Last but not least, go to www.ybetv.org slash shop and we got all types of things that you can purchase that will help you in your business. We got t-shirt bundles. We got the business marketing credit course. We Business marketing course. The business credit course. We got the setup. I said the t-shirt bundles. The mentoring program. We got so many great beautiful things to share with the people for you to go out and purchase and support and help your business to grow that and it's greatly priced last but not least i said last but not least lastly but this was the real last but not least but it's not the other one went last but it ain't least either but this one ain't least but it is last that makes sense <laughs> uh go to um ybetransportation.com fill out an application for um, one of the best trucking jobs that you can see, man. The more we grow, the more we're going to do for the people because the one thing I know as a driver and the one thing that I did help to implement into the company is this, is that we want to treat the driver like people, drivers like people instead of a number. And if you come over to YBE Transportation, that's definitely exactly what we're going to do. We're going to treat you just like the person that you are. As long as you don't come over with all the rah-rah, you come over and you want to work, you want to get the job done, and you want to keep growing and growing and growing. We got so many incentives and so many programs that we're going to be implementing in the, in the course of the year and the next year that is going to be a great place for you to be. So get in. And, and while the iron is hot. So that's all I'm going to say. Go to YBETransportation.com and fill out the application. All right. This one from Rod Chi Miller says, reestablishing my company, picking a carrier and leasing the truck. What up, Tone? First off, I want to thank you for all the videos. Appreciate you, bro. They have been very informative, and I, and I make my way back to becoming a young black entrepreneur. Okay. About one year after my CDL, my brother and I jumped into the owner-operator game. We subleased the semi as well as a couple box trucks doing some LTL work. About eight months into freight slowed down and we were out of business and back in company trucks. Okay. For the last two years, I've been researching how to go about getting at, at truck, getting a truck and getting back into the game. I have a three-part question for you. Shoot. All right. When I first started my business, I established an LLC DOT number EIN the whole nine. When I got back into the game, should I start over fresh, new everything, or just reestablish all those things that were previously in place? Um, first off, it depends. Like it depends on what terms you left on. Did you leave bad credit out there? Did you owe a bunch of vendors? Did you, you know, like the DOT number is. The DOT number, as long as you're going to keep the same name, I would definitely say go about it. And if you are going to do it, you're probably going to have to redo a lot of the things, not redo them fully. I'm talking about, like, redo them as far as um, the address, the phone number, and getting everything established. Get you a logo and get everything, which means that you need to be getting my business credit course, which may, that will show you how to set everything up. Um. Next, what I would have to say, uh, the LLC and the EIN, as long as you don't got a lot of stuff on there that would hinder you, and as long as you want to keep the same name as well, I would definitely uh, just open back up with what you did. Your second question is, what are your thoughts on leasing a truck from Lone Mountain? Uh, Lone Mountain, when they first started off, my understanding was that was a great company. It was pretty lenient, but as you know, as a company grows, a lot of the time, the company grows, and so does the greed. So a lot of people start getting money, and then they just start seeing green, and that's what they make the company about. When they first started off, they was like, they spoke directly to the driver. They were like, we just want to give people the opportunity because we know what you guys are going through leasing these trucks and this, this, this. I don't know if that's their motto anymore. I haven't did business with them, so it could go, it could go better or it could go worse. Um, but it definitely gives you a, a place to go if you're having problems, you know. Um, and through due diligence, you know, uh, I would say due diligence is the best way to go. And there's been a couple people that actually leased from Long Mountain and they didn't have too many problems. So that's not the thing. What types of questions should I be asking XPO before bringing my truck on with them? Uh, you definitely want to know what, what you're going to be making. Is it going to be percentage? Is it going to be about a mile? You want to ask them, uh, do they help you if your truck breaks down? Like, ask them, you know, do they have a shop that they recommend or do they have a shop on site? 
uh, what's the escrow? How much is going to be in the escrow? How does the insurance work? Can I get straight insurance through you, or do I got to get outside insurance? If I got to get outside insurance, what's the what what all types of insurance do I need to get outside? Because some of them just be like, you got to get a non trucking, and we'll take care of everything else. For I think it's non trucking, or Bob. I think it's Bob Tail. Um, last but not least, you want to ask them, is it um, is it forced dispatch? Uh, do is it um, is it the 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 loads are they offered to you uh, one at a time or do they offer you about three or four at a time or do you get access to a load board or uh, what's your percentage you want to ask those types of questions that's got to do a lot with the money um, home time you want to see if they gonna they expect you to do certain things because if you do you know they'll find a way to try to force you and push you into what they're doing you want to ask their home time policies. Um, it's just like it's a lot of things that you want to definitely ask. Um, those are some of the things that I normally ask. Let me see. I, I got some questions that I ask companies. Let me see. I'm about to go in my phone and look it up. Okay. Okay. I ask about a sign-on bonus. I ask about how long is orientation. Uh, I ask what does what does the normal drivers average. Um, I ask them about the shop. Do they help out with costs? Um, do they, the DOT inspection, like, do you need one that's from a big company or a small company? Do you have to do it on site so I can know exactly what to expect? Do they do teams? Because that's always an advantage in that. If they deal with teams, you got the opportunity to grow. Even if you're going out there, let's just say you meet a driver and he, you, you know, you keep in touch with him. Like, man, we should run together. I think that would be pretty cool. And you could just say, hey, well, over here they do teams. And I could get you, you know, we get a good week. I could get you this much to this amount. You know, that's definitely another thing. Um, do you get a fuel discount? You definitely want to know about that. A lot of people been kind of crapping on a fuel discount. They don't want to share. How much is the escrow? Do they have a plate program? Uh, you definitely want to ask those things. Do they charge for you to use the trailer? So those are some of the things. And another thing I seen. In your uh in this, and I just wanted to address this, and then I'm gonna go. It said that you jumped. We subleased a semi. Okay, so that means somebody else had a lease, and then you subleased it. That means that three people was eating money off of the load, or uh, eating your money up. You know, so the first company that they leasing from is getting money from the guy who is the leasee. So let's just say that's five six hundred dollars a week. Then you sublease it; their payment goes up to six to eight hundred dollars because he want to make something, you know, plus the maintenance or whatnot. So that's a lot more, you know what I'm saying? So that's probably why that business failed because that's too much overhead. Like a lease truck is already ridiculously high. Then you gonna sublease that truck? That's that's like taking some 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 vodka and chasing it with vodka like like wait what sir like yeah let me uh let me get a a, a double shot of vodka okay and as a chaser what you want cranberry no i want vodka wait wait sir what did you just say yeah i want to take some vodka and chase it with vodka that that's too much overhead man you want to get that overhead down before you go into any game i know that wasn't a question but i read through that and when our a flag just was like Ding. No, you can't have that type of overhead when you're doing business, man. You, the, the objective, and I want to leave this with everybody. The objective to business is to minimize all expenses as much as possible. Because when you minimize your expenses, you maximize your profit margin. That should be in the Bible or something. Tune, say it again. I said when you minimize your expenses, you maximize your profit margin. Psalms 1832. Banana way. Banana way. Banana. You already know this, your boy Tonchi Ben Silly, and this is YBE TV. And if you don't want to end up in a box, you better think outside of it. YBE.